former TSL Terran starts to the bottom left of the map. It's not pulled, no, it is. TSL Center. <laughs> Just, I liked your approach for that one. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's up against a uh, big fan favorite, fan favorite Protoss of this group from the team. Evil geniuses, he is. Yijihop laid the court. Hak gets his lady call. We have him to the top right on a map where he could once again rely on Blink Stalkers. Gateway attacks. This is what he is known for and he used it against Fantasy. Fantasy did not scout it, wasn't ready, got overwhelmed. And center, will he be in a position where he can win against Hak? A very difficult spot for both of them. Four players are tied for first and second, so the direct comparison between is really between all of them is really, really important. If Hak wins this, He's in a very, very good position to take a direct spot to Kodesh. Notice his win ratio against Terran was terrible in the GSL standings, but if you consider the time period that he played in the GSL, it was a time period we saw Prorosis dying to Siege Tank, Raven pushes almost every game, or other aggressive 2 racks pushes on smaller maps like Dual Sight and the Zelnaga Fortress. So, I mean, just think about that when you look at that stat. It's not as relevant as it once was. Santa now with the scout on the map. This is so tense, Wolf. These are the three games that will lead us into a position where we know exactly what is going to happen, who has to win, and what kind of tiebreakers we could have between the players. Santa, from the big four, he only played one. He played his T and he lost. Huck played Fantasy and he won against him. Now he's facing the second one. Scout is in so the main important. base. Sees the timings for the gas, sees the yep. cybernetics course, sees the chrono boost energy. And uh, Huck, on the other hand, his scouting information is actually null. He's not moved out yeah. with a single unit. He sends his Zealot down. Non existent. He's going to actually go for a Nexus, but this is something he wants to deny the information of center with his SCB. Ooh, he's got his zealot position in the right place. Gets the double hit. And, and you know, when we talk about Santa, we really don't know a lot about his games. He made this one GSL Code appearance, and he played against one Protoss player. He played against Seed, and he played really well. He didn't lose a single map to him, but then he was suddenly up against Parting. And Parting, well, if you're an up-and-coming player, and you suddenly have to meet the probably best Protoss player that we have in the world right now, can't do a lot. That's he lost, true. he didn't win a single map. Center didn't really look good, but he ran into build orders of parting that completely countered his own. So now he is up against Huck. And today we've seen already very solid play by Center. He's definitely a very strong Protoss. Uh, sorry, a very strong Terran and one that you have to be very careful if you're facing. That was a cute SCV pull, dropping him into the bunker to save him against Huck's Stalker. This moment for Huck is critical for what tech he's going to choose. It looks like he's going to go for another gateway before Robo play. There it is. Two gates and the SCV scout. So important for center. He does come in here and see the Nexus. He will see the gateways as well. Yeah, Ooh, saw actually, one only of them. one. Saw one of them, but that gives him at least an idea. There comes the robotics. And center has definitely watched the game of Fantasy and Huck. Because this is, in in a lot of terms, this is a similar map. Of course, it's a smaller map. You have different options. You can go, there's the option of always going to a Banshee play. But against gateway pressure, there is blink strategies that you can execute on this map. So, if you want to prepare for your opponent, you're definitely going to watch what he does against uh, the other Terran player in the group on a map like Antigua Shipyard. And right now, he will probably be aware that he could run into another gateway attack by his opponent. So let's see how Senna prepares for this and how well he scouts what Haki's doing. The second bunker he's making right now is really important. He places it to the side, so there's to make that bunker concave. You see a lot of players make the bunker in front of the first or behind it to try to reinforce that you can't surround it with zealots, but Huck goes double forge here. Creator style takes a third guess. 
and even the fourth, he looks like he wants to play the late game. For the first time we've seen him in this group really intentionally go towards that. And this also means that Senda has to identify what's going on in regards to the upgrades, because if Hawk gets this massive upgrade lead, then he will be in a great position for this late game scenario that you just mentioned. Senda is in the position that scouting information would be important to him. Engineering bay number one is coming up, but if he has only one upgrade against two, he will fall behind quite a lot, and Hawk goes straight into plus one plus one. With all the gas he's getting from these assimilators, which we misrallied his probes, he needs to fix that. With all the gas income, though, he will get from these assimilators. He should be able to go into High Templar or Colossi, whichever he chooses. Colossi is going to be the choice first. He's Rob just playing this very standard. Robotic Spade coming up now. He can go for the Colossus push here on 1 1. Still no fix he on the probes. He cancelled his attack upgrade so that he could get the Robotic Spade out a little bit faster, right? Yeah. And yeah, you said it just best. He didn't fix the problem with the probes. Now here comes the plus one attack upgrade. Did he? I now fixed back? it. Okay. Finally. Probes are mining again at the gas. Lost a bit here though. No. But on the other hand, he's in a pretty good position in this game because he kept center scared. Skinner made the second barracks. He also then controlled the... Uh, center controlled the watchtower, but Huck was poking at his units with the stalker, giving center the illusion of, oh, Huck doesn't care if you move out and push uh, him. He's just going to sit back and defend. And now Huck's in a position where he can get a Colossi or two, and with one on upgrades, move over to that third base and take it very comfortably here. Look at the pylon placement for Huck in the main base. He has them everywhere. Nice coverage, so that draw play is something that we will see come from a mile away. Plus one attack now started, plus, pu plus one, plus one is nearly done for Huck. And a factory placement at the third base, trying to delay it if possible. But the Protoss player is now going into the Twilight Council. He wants to go straight into plus two, plus two, and these upgrades are going to become very scary for the Terra player. <laughs> and Marine is going to stim to chase down the attempt to kill this probe. Probe could turn around and kill him in an ironic uh, twist of fate, but he does not decide to do it. And Marine will get the kill. He's so tired. He's like, ah. <laughs> And at this moment in time, Huck starts 2-2. Huck does miss a second with yeah, those upgrades. Look how ahead he is with those upgrades. Yeah, he doesn't have a third base right away, but center's third base is spotted by Huck now. He knows how late it is. We'll lose a few probes here, but not very many. Just two. But Huck's knowledge that the third base of center is this late makes him feel extremely comfortable because he can take a hit to the economy just slightly with his Nexus timing if he has the better tech and he knows it. The Terran player is far ahead in supply, but this is because Huck invests a lot more of his resources into the tech. And these upgrades are going to be very difficult for Senna to match when the fight occurs. He is still on plus one attack. He didn't even start the armor upgrade, and we don't have the armor here on the production tab. We don't see the second engine Engineering bay. If you look at the spending tab, which I know very people, very few people actually do, 2,000 resources more are spent on technology for Hunt. So that's a pretty big difference. This drop it, it continues to be annoying. But Huck is not too concerned. This big push, on the other hand, is something that will give him a, a cause for concern. He needs to make sure that he has vision of which angle that center is going to approach from. He has an observer right now, and it will see this, maybe scanned. Here's a scan here he wants to approach, but. Huck is ready. He's got that observer that's so important about where his opponent yeah. is going to move in. A 30 supply advantage for Senta. Can he make something happen with it? He has a few units in position, but those zealots are moving in. We don't have a charge upgrade just yet. The dropship is still trying to accomplish something at the base to the right side of the map, but the medivac is already low on hit points. Has to be careful that it doesn't get sniped. Calder, we're about to have two, two upgrades against plus one. Yeah. A Huck is really hitting all of his chrono boosts. You just saw them fade. Let's see how fast he goes in the 3-3. He doesn't have the resources and minerals yet, but he certainly has the gas. The army supply is heavily in favor of Senda, on the other hand. 95 against 66. This is the sacrifice that Huck made. Yep. And Huck, with his upgrades though, can claw for this army if he gets the right angle. This is something the center is trying to prevent. Huck now making units instead of getting those additional upgrades. He knows how ahead he is. He can click on these units and see their upgrades. Huck is actually on the chase now, and he kills the factory, and to my knowledge, there's no, no armory. armory. Yep. None. No armory whatsoever, so this is a massive loss to the upgrades of Sinner. He has to pull his SCVs and go for an attack here. He's not going to be able to play the late game if yep. he gives Huck any more time. He has to do some damage. He has six Vikings now, and he has to be really careful. He can't get another... He can't get those upgrades. He's on 1-1. One, one. 
and he's on three bases, but what can he really make happy here? This is a weird, weird game for Senna now. He is still in the lead in the overall army supply, but Huck is catching up very fast, and Senna is now adding additional barracks. Oh, nice these Colossi, position. though, are not where they want to be. The Zealots come in, but the Colossi go down with doing very little damage. The Colossi didn't do anything at all. This is really awful now for Huck, losing those area of back damage units. He traps the Bioforce. He's got enough Stalkers to chase. The Zealots are coming in here. The Stalkers, on the other hand, do not have Blink, so it's a little bit more difficult for him to chase down where the Zealots. The rest in. of Senna's army. It's in the middle of the map. He's trying to get a flank, it looks like. He's also got a unit group running into Huck's third base right now. Here come the SCVs being used as a bit of a meat shield, trying here to hold those flank. zealots for as long as possible. The flank is here, but it still looks like we are missing a lot of units. There are a few at the third base of Huck doing uh, damage. And but Huck's the bonus micro. player is in such a great position. Huck's micro is so much better than Senna's here, and he chases the command center away. Huck looking really good in this game. His upgrades 3-3 three, three are started. The factory just now finishing for center. Before he could even start an armory, he had to rebuild that factory. And the base with the Observer! Oh One more God. shot will do it! Oh. Oh. oh! Wow, he saves it, but that was definitely a close call. Too close for comfort. Oh man, that was that was intense. Center is probably breathing a sigh of relief, but this game is not over yet. He's still very far behind. He needs to take an engagement. If he catches Huck's army here, he could do it, but Huck gets away safe. I don't think that he can do anything here. Look at the upgrades, plus three, plus three started. Ghost some Academy coming up for center. He's behind in Harvesters. He's now starting his second engineering bay and the armory. But this is just such a bad spot for him to be in. He had the advantage with the army supply earlier. Now Huck closed the gap. He has a massive lead in the upgrades. He will be on 3-3 three, three against 1-1 one, one Wolf. Yeah, Huck needs to add gateways. He does it actually, in fact, now three additional gateways. You can see that. He was a little bit concerned about holding his third base. He didn't know if he could support those gates just yet. Once he took those engagements in the middle of the map, no one even forced his opponent to lift. He's like, all right, well, now I have the, the bank, and I want to spend it. I'm going to make four additional gates. Still producing Colossi right now, and his three through upgrades are lining up not only to defend center's attack, but also with Storm Research. Already has six High Templar out with energy ready to go. Santa is moving into position, uh, but Hawk is the one who we have to watch out for. He's at 150 supply, plus 3, plus 3, about to be completed. Santa didn't even start 2-2 yet. Storm is about to be done. Yeah. If Hawk doesn't screw up big time, this should be his game. Yeah. I, I just don't see Santa making this work. He's getting five ghosts, but they're not ready. They're going to be with the upgrade, the energy upgrade, but... Huck has so many storms available he can use right now. Huck is not on the defensive. Huck is moving out. He can probably take the fourth as he attacks if he wants to. That's how ahead he is. He's maxed out in upgrades. This is 3-3 against 1-1. One, one. That's oh. brutal. He'll probably serve plasma shield soon. The timing on these ghosts is actually just a little bit off in fact for center. He misses two of them. Could have lined them up perfectly if we had just a second more. Santa is desperately trying to bring a few supply depots up so that he can stop those zealots. But the onslaught is on. Here we go. The Vikings being stormed. He he's zoning him out. He can only snipe. And he's trying. He's trying to snipe. But there are too many High Templars. Huck can completely zone his opponent out. He's now in a position to force a lift on the third. He doesn't even have to kill it. Senda's economy is in a bad and a tough spot. He can't even start the upgrades if he wanted to because he doesn't have the resources. Yep. Now Center is going for a counterattack though and a very massive one. He pulls all of his SCVs. He's only mining in the main base now. He wants to cut Huck's third off before Huck can get home. He needs a stim and already start running if he wants to do that. Huck is about to catch him here. And this is going to be the battle that decides the position for Huck here. He already pulls his probes. Pulls his probes. The rest of the army is still waiting. Is scanned though. Uses the scan. Has the vision. And here we go. The Zealots charging in a, a few attempts to make something happen with the MPs. The Vikings in a good position. The Zealots actually eating a storm, and Center has a good con game. But here come the rest of the storms. Huck has so much bank to warp in units. The Vikings are gone. Center still has a decent position on the left side, but on the right side, he's got nothing left. And Huck's warp in is going to be pretty Huck's intense. Huck's warp in is going to finish him. Uh, these upgrades, they play the game.
We have 3-3 against 1-1. One, one. I, I keep harping on that, but guys, this is such a massive lead. It has to be pointed out over and over again. And center's got nowhere to run now. Huck still has no blink upgrade for his stalkers. It's probably something he realizes just now, but that's it. GG. Very important win for Huck. A very, very important win for him. Center lost to Nesti and to Huck. In the top four players, and Huck suddenly is on a 3 1 score. He tied scores with Nesty. Well played. That's, that's that Huck nod that lets you know that he's feeling good about things here. And there's a Juani in the booth. Don't worry, Juani's not actually a Yankee Spanish, just thinks the hat looks cool. <laughs> well. That was very important for the foreigner. And that was a, a smackdown, by the way, just to say, watching that game, Hug took a lot of risks, but he took them slowly but steadily. That was the type of play that you would actually see from somebody like Creator. That's what we saw there. Yeah, that was very well executed by Hug, and he takes the win. He's now in 3-1 in the group, exactly the same score that ST has. And in the next set of matches, we will have this battle between ST and Hug, which is, of course, also very, very important because the winner of this is already in uh, Code S. Now we have Fantasy and Fantasy is up against Flying. The battle between the two Casper players that we have in this group and Flying did not win a single match yet. If Flying suddenly now takes out Fantasy, that would be an awful position yeah, you know, for the Terran player. Exactly, it hurts Fantasy but doesn't really help Flying considering that he can't get the Code S spot directly. He might be able to fight his way into a tie situation to get the seed, or not the seed, but the wild card. And put that card in his pocket and let him go to the matches tomorrow. Which, by the way, for those of you guys who are tuning in late or haven't really been following the up and downs until just now, we are going to have that wild card group tomorrow yep. at our regular time. It's just going to be like a regular up and down group, except without a wild card spot. And we have five players instead of six yeah. this time. So far, every single group had six players, but tomorrow the wild card group, five players, two of them will advance. We have three Zerg players in the group, one Terran, Jan, the only non Zerg that was able to uh, claim a third place. And Fantasy and Flying just joined the lobby. It's Terran versus Protoss, and for Fantasy, there's a lot on the line. For Flying, he still has a shot at the third place, but uh, third place. But still, things are looking not good for our Protoss player here. Fantasy really wants to take the sweat. The map that he's playing it on is going to be a Missile City, a pretty good map for Terran. Flying is in a lot of trouble. He really, really needs this win. He's playing against somebody he knows. I'm sure has faced several times in the past. They're both Castle players. They're StarCraft 1, Brood War Pro, switching over here. Fantasy, arguably the best of the best from StarCraft 1, and already showing great improvements today than what we saw from last time, even. Abyssal City, the map always a bit unfortunate for a Protoss player. Not a map that we really like to play. Fantasy is looking calm and collected, flying a little bit nervous, I would say. And the game is about to go live. We are here at the GSL up and down. This is Group E. Fantasy versus Flying. Let's jump into the game. Matches broadcasted by Colorful.